O praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. couple announcements. We're so glad to be back in our sanctuary and we welcome back all of those who are here. We thank God for you. We thank God for bringing us through this rather difficult time and for bringing us back together. We recognize that some of our members are not here today who are still viewing us online and we pray God's blessings on you and hope that you will also join us in time. We want to pray for our member Glenda Mitchell whose husband passed away this past week. 
Let's pray for the comfort of the family during these difficult times. And Second Baptist, let's be, be encouraged, okay? Uh, God has brought us a long ways, and we don't believe he brought us this far to leave us. So let's be encouraged, and God is going to bring us through. We give him the praise and the glory for that in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to return to you just a portion of the blessings you have given to us. Lord, magnify and multiply these blessings, Lord, so that they may be used to uplift your kingdom. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh, gracious and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of worship. And now thank you for this time of sharing your word. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will empower me, thy humble servant, to proclaim the everlasting gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the people of God may be blessed and edified by the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Our subject today is glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Glad to be back in the house of the Lord. It is a takeoff from Psalm 122, verse 1. That's our text for today. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Again, my subject is glad to be back in the house of the Lord. I want to start with a question, Second Baptist. Are you glad to be here? Are you glad to be home again? We haven't been here in this set-aside place since the third Sunday in March. It's good to be back. As we entered into the year of 2020 this past January, none of us had any idea that in a few weeks, circumstances would prohibit us from gathering here for five months. We had, no, we had no idea that our way of life in general and our congregational life specifically would be so radically changed. Life is full of unexpectancies, and our society and our nation and our local community have known one of them recently, an unexpected. We are all trying hard to come to grips with what has come upon our nation. With regards to the church life, to church life, COVID-19 has had a major impact on this nation and on every state and community. For months, congregations have not met in person as they have always been in the habit of doing, all because of a health menace. But COVID-19 and the massive disruptions in human life it has caused has not taken God by surprise. God knew that this time was coming. You see, while our view of time has constraints, God knows the end from the beginning. God knew that this time was coming. So God gave humankind the technology for virtual reality productions so that even in a time of pandemic, his church could still function as a church, thank God. There is a church in Houston, Texas that bears the name the Church Without Walls. That name of one particular church may well be applied to the church generally during these last few months as the church has gone on its way virtually, the Church Without Walls. But time has passed, and after prayerful deliberation, churches everywhere have been moving back to in-person worship services. Our prayer is that our great God will bless these efforts locally and worldwide. Turning to the witness of the word, I first want to say that centuries ago, the children of Israel for a long time did not have the freedom to worship in their temple in Jerusalem. It was not because of a pandemic as we know it, but because of their disobedience to God. Maybe it could be called a pandemic of disobedience. Because of Israel's sin and disobedience, God allowed her to be attacked by the country of Babylon in 586 BC, and most of her citizens were allowed to be taken into exile in Babylon. Exile was nearly the same as slavery and the Israelites endured it from 586 to 538 BC. During that painful time, they were away from their homeland and their beloved place of worship. One indicator of the agony of that painful period has been preserved for us in the opening verses of Psalm 137. The Psalm writer, looking back on that dismal experience, writes, by the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept 
when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung up our lyres. Lyres were musical instruments. We hung up our lyres. For there our captors required of us songs, and our poor tormentors mirth sang, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. In response to that inappropriate request, the exiled Israelites asked, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The people of Israel were away from their appointed and pleasant place of worship in Jerusalem. They were separated from their familiar and satisfying worship surroundings. It was a time of spiritual malaise for them. But time passed. They endured their dismal days of exile, and eventually, under a new political regime that replaced the Babylonian captors, they were allowed to return to their homeland. That was a happy time. Once more, they were able to gather in the temple that they loved. That they loved. It was a time of joy that filled their hearts and caused their voices to burst forth into praise. And this is the kind of joy that is expressed in another but earlier psalm, Psalm 122, where our text for today is found. In Psalm 122, verse 1, the psalmist, David, calls out, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's now look closely at the text. The introductory words, I was glad, tell us that David was giving this testimony sometime after he had received the invitation of others to accompany them in going to a tabernacle for worship. He was glad to receive the invitation. In that day, persons who lived away from a tabernacle would agree to join others in walking to the place where it was located. Apparently along the way, they would call out to others to come and join them. Thus, let us go into the house of the Lord. After all that God had done for David, he would be glad at any time to go into the house of the Lord, to the place of worship. Scholars tell us that at that time in history, the big Jerusalem temple had not yet been built, but a big tent had been set up, and the Ark of the Covenant had been placed in it. And no doubt David regularly went there for worship. He was glad to go there for worship. David's love for God's house is well known to us. We read his words in Psalm 27, verse 4, where he says, One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David's love for God's house is well known. We read where he says in Psalm 65, verse 4, Blessed is he whom thou dost choose and bring near to dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, thy holy temple. David loved God's house. In the closing verse of the great Psalm 23, he wrote, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David loved God's house. So we're not surprised that here he calls out, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And now, Second Baptist Saints, I've been moved by the Holy Spirit to lift David's joyful words out of their ancient context and bring them over to our time today. I've already noted that for several months now, congregations have not been worshiping in, in their houses of worship. The Center for Disease Control, the health authorities, and practical experience have all indicated that it was not safe to do so. But now a lot of prayer has gone up. Safety measures have been put in place, and worshipers of God Almighty are ready to return to their sanctuaries. 
the emotion that David felt and expressed in our text is now shared by many who have been away from their tabernacle. And so today, Second Baptist, the spirit of gladness fills the air. Calls have gone out to let us go into the house of the Lord. And lovers of God and of his son Jesus are glad, real glad about that call. We here at Second Baptist are glad. We're extremely glad. We're glad because we're in God's appointed meeting place again, where we gather for worship. This is where we come together as a church family to spend quality spiritual time with God. This is where, as Psalm 150 points out, we praise God in his sanctuary. This is where we praise him for his mighty deeds. This is where we praise him according to his exceeding greatness. This is where we make a joyful noise to the Lord. This is where we come into his presence with thanksgiving. This is where we enter into his courts with praise. This is where we give thanks to him and bless his name. This is where we thank God for his many blessings and give back to him some of what he has given to us. Where we thank him for blessings material and immaterial. Where we thank him for the gift of life and sustaining us in life's journey. Where we thank him for life's provisions. Where we thank him for keeping us safe and secure. For bringing us through danger seen and unseen. This is the place. This is the place. This is the place where we're used to singing the songs of Zion. Songs such as, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Where we sing, rock of ages cleft for me, where we sing because he lives, where we sing never alone, amazing grace, blessed assurance, there is power in the blood, love lifted me, great is thy faithfulness, pass me not, in times like these, God will take care of you, yes, God is real, I love to tell the story and hold to God's unchanging hand. Second Baptist Saints, we're glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Now we recognize the fact that not all of our church family is here today. For that reason, our worship ministry will still be made available virtually for those who are not here. But in the near future, we want all of our church family to be able to let go with a hearty, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Second Baptist has opened its doors for over 180 years. Praise God. She has been a beacon light in downtown Detroit for all those years. She has been a champion for the cause of Christ for all those years. She has spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for all those years. Glad souls have entered into her doors and given thanksgiving to God all those years. So let the saints of God who frequent this holy place keep on being glad about coming into the house of the Lord. Second Baptist, we have so much to thank God for. By and large, God has protected us. He has built the proverbial fence of protection around us. As Psalm 27 says, he has hid us in his shelter in the day of trouble. He has concealed us under the cover of his tent. As Psalm 138 says, though we have walked in the midst of trouble, God has preserved our lives. So second, let us keep on coming into the house of the Lord here. It's a good place to come into. This is hallowed space. The love of God has been preached here for a long time. The cry, the, 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 cry, the, cry, the, the cross of Jesus Christ has been lifted up here a long time. The Holy Spirit has empowered and moved about in this sanctuary a long time. Countless souls have been saved in this place. Both bodies and spirits have been fled, have been fed in this place. This is a holy and sanctified place. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. 
And now, I, I want to focus this brief sermonic meditation this way. When I was young, in my teens, growing up in the shallow Baptist church in Trenton, New Jersey, my pastor would sometimes close his prayers with the word, Lord, give us a home in glory where we will be able to praise thee in a better way than this. I remember my pastor, the late Dr. S. Howard Woodson Jr. saying this many times. I was young then and did not grasp the full meaning of Dr. Woodson's words, Lord, give us a home in glory where we will be able to praise thee in a better way than this. But the years went by and I learned more and more about this Christian journey that we're on. At some point I learned that we did not come here to stay. Even if we live to be 100 years old, one day every one of us will leave this domain and go into the presence of God. And our worshiping God here in this sphere will come to an end. Eventually I understood this. Then I came to understand the provisions God has made for his believing children beyond here. God has prepared a place, a heavenly place, a glorious place for us. And in that place, praises to God and to Jesus will be offered up forevermore. We read about that place in the book of Revelation, that place where the saints of God will be able to worship him in a better way than this. When it's all over saints, that's where I want to go, don't you? And now I close with this line from one of the old gospel songs that says, I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word that you have set forth through this humble servant. Thank you for all the listening ears that have heard this word. Thank you for this church. Thank you for being back here on holy ground. Thank you, God, for all the saints of God who have worshipped here through the years. And thank you, God, for the provisions you've made for us to, when we leave here to worship in a better way than this. In the, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and forever. Amen.